How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week three of the season. We will go on the road for the third time to upstate New York to play Syracuse and see if we can take on the Orange and start the season 3-0. We're number eight in the country. We are the higher overall team. We are favored to win. They did win their first game, but it was against Temple. Um, although, for some reason, on the road, kind of a weird road game for Syracuse to be taking, but... Uh, they managed to get the win, and, you know, maybe they would have wished it was a little bit closer, but a win's a win nonetheless. Meanwhile, we have beaten Notre Dame, relatively close one, but a good fighting Irish team, and then we slaughtered Virginia, trying to get a little bit of revenge from last year when they managed to beat us. So, uh, I don't know, a lot of road games right off the bat. We got to keep the winning streak going. Uh, but before we do that, of course, we're going to take a look at ESPN. We'll see our top 25 polls uh, just to see any ranked matchups. Uh, Florida and Bama will play. That's 9 versus 13. Uh, 14 Notre Dame is playing at Florida State. Kind of want them to win, uh, but it doesn't really matter to me either way. Uh, I guess if they lose, the odds of us playing them in the conference championship drop and... I don't want to have to play them in the conference championship. That's for sure. Why make things more difficult? That's it for ranked matchups. So not a whole lot this week. If we see upsets, it's going to be pretty crazy. A lot of teams playing their FCS opponents this week. So who knows? Maybe we see some sort of just insane chaos. Uh, reminder, Marquise Jackson, fourth on the Heisman watch list, coming off of his five total touchdown game where he had four special teams touchdowns. Two punt returns, two kick returns. Absolutely insane. So he's got that going for him. And we're going to do a little bit of recruiting. Um, we have some guys that maybe we need to scout. But first, let's see if the people that we're giving points to, uh, if it makes sense to continue to give them points. Uh, I know there was one contentious one. We are gaining on Illinois with Will Dixon. Chris Douglas, we're gaining on Penn State. Spencer Stanley, this is the one that's tough. The 80 overall corner, still losing five a week towards Georgia. Um, but I'm going to just continue to be aggressive here. I mean, if we look at our bonus points, if the conference prestige goes up or if our championship contender goes up, which I think it might if we win this, uh, we could start clawing away at that 500-point deficit. Um add that on to potentially a really good visit for us okay, and maybe georgia has a bad visit and you know we could maybe pick this guy up so definitely worth it in the lead now with nick Pittman, the 80 overall guard uh and then there's going to be a couple of guys that we will need to take off cody wilson i think we just recently added but haven't scouted so he's gone jeremy callahan looks good like everything just uh, in total looks pretty solid uh, we've got a big lead with Ian Bain, so it looks pretty good so far. The people that we're not giving points to, we still have a decent chance to jump up on the uh, the board for them uh, if we don't already have the lead, which is really nice to see a lead with a lot of these players. Um, you know, there's a lot of them that I wish that we could be giving points to. It's just not quite going to happen yet, and... We have a couple of guys we need to scout as well, so that's going to take up our points for this week. Hopefully, it's pretty solid. Let me just double-check their points to make sure uh, that we don't scout somebody that is unobtainable for us or that doesn't make sense. And I got to be honest, none of these guys really make a whole lot of sense. Look at how far behind we are on all of them. So, uh, we're not going to scout them. Uh, I'm also not going to take them off the board yet, so... Instead, let's give some scholarship offers out to uh, a couple of kids. Jeremy Callahan, Jeremy Harrison, Josh Bryant, and Antoine Pope will all get those offers. And uh, then we can start working our way down. Maybe maybe next week, the offers that we give will go to guys that we have the lead with. And it's a pretty solid amount so far, especially considering for the guys that we are in the lead with, we're only giving points to one of them. Uh, and how locked is Ian Bain? Already 42%. That's great news for us. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the game. Uh, Syracuse, a 90 overall team, 90 offense with an 88 defense. So we have the edge, great edge on offense. Their defense, uh, I'm not sure what to think of it, but uh, I mean, I feel like we definitely have the talent advantage um, more so than just the three overall shows. 
we're gonna continue to wear the all whites until we lose them not something you would ever see uh realistically in college football but that's what we're gonna do we have five away games to start the season i'm hoping that we're wearing the the all white uniforms for all five games and syracuse is updated a uh, lot of looks we're gonna go not with their standard but instead with their all orange look the alt four we're gonna go orange v white a uh, little creamsicle look as we uh head towards new york and we can see after that one game statistically their offense did okay uh their defense also did uh, honestly not very good they gave up a lot of yards for playing not a great uh what was it temple best players 95 overall center they've got a good free safety and a tight end um uh, but again there's that overall advantage in our favor and i just gotta hope that we can come out and you know uh keep control of the football that's always gonna be our number one priority right now i think so we are here in the carrier dome in syracuse to take on the orange tails never fail okay it's failed us to, uh Two out of the three times we've gone for it this season, which isn't great. Thankfully, no wind inside the dome, so it doesn't matter which way we defend. But we will be starting with the ball to kick off this game. Marquise Jackson, it is really deep in the end zone, but I would be a fool not to let him take it out. And, you know, doesn't work out that time, but uh, why would I not give him the opportunity? Virginia in our last game did a very good job at stopping the run so I'd like for us to be able to get it done this time and CJ Beasley fumbles the ball on the first play of the game immediately we're hit with a turnover well that is very unfortunate let's try to hold these guys to a field goal now they're gonna run the ball on first down We'll get the stop. Unfortunately, we can't force a fumble. And second 11, we're bringing the blitz again. It's another run, and ooh, Riley gets there to easily stop it. Big third and 11 now. So they will go in the hurry up for this third and 11, trying to get the stop. They will go to the air, and it's a quick throw, and we get the quick tackle. So the fumble only costs us three points. It's a little bit disappointing, but not the end of the world. And since I know there's pretty much no chance of us blocking this, we'll put Marquise in the back just in case they screw up and have a terrible kicker. But no, he's got it, no problem. So 3 0 Syracuse, just like that. As unfortunately, Washington barely avoids upset against USC. Would have loved to have seen uh, a top five team lose to an unranked opponent, but not going to happen that time. Marquise again bringing this out, looking for the blocking, not really getting it. Gets out past the 20 that time, but okay, let's see if we can get more than one play out of the offense. No deep safeties for this Syracuse team as we're going to go safely to CJ Beasley on that one. And he does hold on to the ball and then holds on after the contact. And we just got to continue to show some trust in the running back. You know, sometimes things happen. Sometimes you fumble the ball and now maybe he's got his confidence back. He holds on to that one, only getting a yard though. So let's go to the air on this third down. They're bringing pressure. Bad throw from me. Logan Malden can't hold on to it anyways. So it is incomplete and it'll be fourth down. And I thought I took the Wildcat out of uh, our playbook, but Braden Bennett is in it fourth and four. We're going to go for this anyways. Uh, I'm not a coward. Braden, a lot of space. Can he make the safety miss? Forced him into a bad angle, and Braden gets it done. 35 yards on what I'm going to call a designed quarterback scramble <laughs> with the running back, of course, and we convert the very risky fourth down. So that's pretty scary, but we're fine for now. Right on, handing it off again. And again, just a yard. So I think it's our offensive line just not being great with the run blocking this year. They have some plays, you know, where with streaks or flashes of brilliance, but... Uh, it's not a consistent thing. I'm giving it up for Marquise. Back at the end zone. The ball is perfectly thrown. And Marquise just gets enough of a step on his man. We got to go and hope that we can get this extra point off before they take a look at this because there's a chance he was out too far. That is beautiful, though. Great ball from right on. Marquise is able to continue the Heisman campaign with that one. And the refs didn't even take a look at it. So it must have been pretty clean. 
which means great throw, great confidence from Radon to just put that one up there for his guy. The defense forced a three and out last time on the field, even though they were in bad field position and ended up giving up some points. But uh, see if they can do that again. Bad pass from Andrew Estes, the quarterback for Syracuse on that first down. Curious to see, expecting the run on second down, and it will be a handoff. Man, we went for the shift out towards the edge. Uh, ooh, almost gave up the first down. Uh, even if they don't run this one up the middle, that's how we're going to try to bring the blitz. Third and inches, try to get in here and disrupt stuff as Smith gets a jump and quarterback's just having to get rid of it. He does have a man wide open on the play, which, you know, is a bit of a shame, but we really just had to sell it to stop the run. I got no reason not to continue blitzing, so we'll do it again here. First and 10 is the... Tight end comes in motion, and they will step back to pass, and this quarterback, again, just has to kind of throw one away. I just feel like we're going to see a run any second now, so I'm trying to be prepared for it, and there it is, and oh, was that his first tackle? It might be Leon Sandcastle getting in there. The second tackle of the game, I guess, and he's able to stop them at the line of scrimmage, so... Good job from the freshman as they step back to pass and you have to get rid of it so quickly. And Don Riley had the pick six and he dropped it. So it does give us a fourth down to work with. And we get to force them to punt this one away, but just a, a bit of a shame as we'll see returnable ball for Marquise Jackson. Special teams hasn't been necessarily the best so far today. And yeah, there's just no blocking for him. So he only gets nine yards on that return. Trying to continue to establish some sort of running game. We give it to CJ Beasley on first down and it's only good for two more. It just doesn't seem like we quite have it yet. Uh, maybe the read option though. Radon, plenty of space to work with. Getting some blocking downfield. I was late to slide. Thankfully, he holds on through the contact and he gets us the first down. And maybe we get these guys. We'll see what the safety does. But on the play action, I'm looking for Marquise deep again. He's beat his man, but the ball is well underthrown and I'm lucky it's not picked off. Just late making the throw. That's on me and maybe a little bit on Radon's arm strength as, uh, well, Willie, our right guard, is injured for now, but we'll sub in the backup and let him rest. I'm really curious what happened there because it's super rare to uh, to see offensive linemen get injured in this game. But we'll look for the quick slant on second down. We've got Tyson Mobley, and oh my gosh, these guys are hard hitters as they shake that one loose. Brings up a third and long for the offense to try to convert as the running back is not open. Oh, what an interception to jump in front of that route. Uh, just heads up play there. Can't really be too upset. That was phenomenal. A little bit late maybe making the throw. Maybe I didn't wait long enough. I'm not sure, but thought my man was going to be open, and he definitely was not. They're going to come at us, and, well, Sandcastle can't get it done. Just uh, didn't even get up to contest that one. Really not playing like a top 10 team at the moment. Expecting the run. It's the option out towards the edge. Phillips. Needs to get that tackle. That's going to count for now. Knocks him out of bounds. But I definitely need to see him bring him down. He's going to go for the exact same thing. And Phillips this time again gets him knocked out of bounds. So third and six. Chance to get off the field again. If they go with this option again. I'm going to be really, really surprised with the play calling. They won't. They step back to pass. Plenty of time for the quarterback as he goes for the end zone. And Stokes has it. Manny gets the interception. Oh, just barely stepped out of bounds. Could have been a defensive touchdown. Instead, we get the ball back at our own four-yard line. So we'll come out to run J.J. Barr in the fullback dive on first down, trying to get positive yards, and they say we do, but just barely. Neither team, it seems like, really wants to score at this point. Uh, as it's just a struggle, and finally a decent run. Brayden Bennett stays on his feet through the initial contact. Rumbles forward for 19 on that play. Radon, a little bit cold at this point, has me worried to make uh, maybe a risky throw, and nobody really seems open, so we're going to just try to get positive yards. Uh, hope for the best, as that's actually going to end our first quarter. So we have the lead at the end of one. I don't like the way that we have it. Um, great touchdown pass from Radon to Marquise. 
to get the touchdown, but two turnovers, uh, and it's been making the defense work. So we got to just, again, hold on to the football. Continue to look to the air on these plays as throwing it. Marquise comes down with it. This man is turning into a monster. If I can start to rely on Marquise to hold on to those ones through contact, it's going to be great news for us as, man, run out to the edge doesn't work either. So just not a great run offense this season. All I can say is thank goodness that we do have Radon on the team because it gives us, you know, a little bit more of a running threat as through that one poorly, had the check down further out towards the edge, and now it's third down. I just feel like I haven't quite been making the right read so far this game, and you know what, this probably isn't right either, but we're going to send it for Marquise. I, listen, I'm going to go for him way more often now that I know that he's a Heisman candidate. And unfortunately for me, that's going to force me to make a bunch of mistakes that I really don't want to, as we will try to punt this one into a good spot. Will he be able to field it? Yes, he gets under it. He does field it, and, well, we get the stop quickly. But this is turning into way more of a defensive battle than I was hoping. We've had plenty of opportunities to get interceptions, and we have one on the day. That's what I want to continue to see is this quarterback feeling some pressure, goes over the middle. Man, he just a little bit behind, can't catch up, and Alfred gets 26. So this quarterback's only 50% on the day, but it's a good 50%. We called the run up the middle, and we will smother them in the backfield. That's a loss of four. Great play that time from the defense. And we'll try the linebacker blitz on second down as I'm expecting them to go to the air here. It's a long ways to go. No, this is going to be a handoff. Can the tackling be there? That was a great hurdle. You don't see that often. He's seven yards as well. Uh, unfortunately, they are in a third down. We'll see. Can we get the stop? Got to watch out for the option. Maybe a little bit of a draw there. It's just really nothing to worry about. Their running game is just as bad as ours today, and we get the stop. So we will see yet another punt coming out from this uh, this punter. I'm going to try to field it with Marquise. It might be foolish. <laughs> it is. Uh, listen, anything we can do to force this guy to get the Heisman, I'm going to try. So y'all are going to have to bear with me when I make mistakes trying to uh, get him going. Radon, still cold on the day. I don't like it. Let's try to get him heated up by just scrambling, picking up yards the easy way, and uh, just moving the chains. I can't afford to have my quarterback be cold as... Uh-oh. Malcolm couldn't hold on to that one. I thought it was a pick, though. I don't know if it's my play calling that's bad or if it's Syracuse just having really good defense today or what. But it's just a struggle right now. And it's really difficult because I feel like Marquise could burn his man on almost any play, but it's not quite happening. Oh, missing a block for uh, Braden Bennett. He could have been gone. Still got 15. That's a big carry for us. Um, since we're halfway through the second quarter, I'm a little bit curious to see what happens. Oh my gosh, with the uh, the time on the clock here, CJ Beasley was wide open. A little bit more speed he made. I don't know, maybe could have been gone, but that's a great pickup there. That play is essentially like a bubble screen, except the people who would be setting the blocks are running routes and, uh, you know, maybe fooling the defense. So that one seems to work pretty well. Unlike our runs up the middle today. Again, trying to pass maybe a mistake trying to pass as much as we are but it's been working pretty well and there we find dj johnson the quick corner another 10 yards really moving the ball now problem is i still feel like we don't quite have the uh the running game that i want so brayden bennett is having a good game himself that's what four carries for 70 plus yards 84 but just as a whole the unit's not there yet so I think it's time to give the offense and the offensive line a chance to prove itself. And we, from this first and goal, are just going to run the ball up the middle until we score. Second and goal, it's going to be J.J. Barr that comes in. This is a big test to see whose goal line is feeling better today. J.J. got a yard there. He only needs one more, and he's got two more opportunities potentially. While we're only 25% on third down so far today. I'd be foolish not to give it. They are stacked up over the center. Makes me want to audible out, but we're going to stick to our guns and maybe a mistake. JJ does get back to the line of scrimmage, but that was scary. 
Letting the clock run down as far as I can. It's going to be right on this time. Hopefully diving over the line into the end zone. Less than half a minute to play in the half and he gets in. I don't know if the dive was necessary, but hey, it's a little bit of added flair. 28 seconds and Syracuse is now down 11. So hopefully we can hold them. If they score here, we're in trouble since they get the ball to start the third quarter. Um, but our defense has been honestly really good so far. So I have high hopes. We'll just continue to sit in this man coverage that we've been rocking and hope that it's enough. Quarterback throwing it out and Kale Mackey. Good job deflecting that one. This feels like one of those games where we're going to have opportunities to create turnovers the whole way through. It's just a question of will we be able to get it as Javante Williams gets 11 yards there. And I feel like there's no reason for me really to change the defense at this point. They're going to step back to pass and Kale Mackey there to def def break up the pass with a massive hit on the running back. So he's been assigned to cover the running back recently. And he is most definitely winning that battle at the moment. And he's got another pass break up there. Oh my gosh, playing out of his mind at the end of this half. And we'll see. Can we get the stop on third and 10? Hoping for the best. Kale can't break that one up, but it does give us 10 seconds to take the timeout. And you never know. There's a chance that we could score here. We have one of the most dangerous weapons in the country standing deep downfield to try to return this and it will be a returnable ball the question is can we get some blocking because we haven't so far today but it's looking beautiful so far clock is at zeros one man to beat and marquis can't do it oh i thought for sure he was gone but it doesn't matter there was a penalty on the play anyways so uh no reason for them to accept or decline that it's leon sandcastle getting hit with it and that will bring us to halftime we have a two-score lead. Defense has been great. Um, feels like we should be up more, but we just want the win uh, first and foremost. Let's try to establish more of the running game. That's still a goal, and let's try to hold on to the ball better in the second half. And if we can do those two things, I think we come away with the win. And hey, at this point, if you like the video, please feel free to hit the like button. Easiest way to help with the channel. Frederick will get us underway to start this second half. And our third game and third road game of the season. And they'll just take the touchback as we've held them to 103 yards so far. Going to absolutely expect these guys to come out and run the ball on the first play of this drive. And they do run it out towards the edge and we get the stop. It's Emmanuel Bush eventually bringing down Javante Williams for a loss of two. And it has just been domination at this point. Uh, there's really not a whole lot that they can do, it seems like. That's an okay run for them, but it's still third down, six yards to pick up. So if we can hold them on this play and get the opportunity to come right back out, they could be in a lot of trouble, but Manny just uh, goes a little bit too deep and gets beat. It's a shame because he was close to getting there, but not quite. Bring in the safety blitz and we stop the run again. It seems like it's just one or two plays here and there that could really be shutting this uh, offense down. You know, if we could just stop those couple of third downs, we're going to bring the pressure. Third and three. They will hand it off out towards the edge. Phillips kick at the tackle, and oh, we got it, but he was able to go over the body of Phillips to pick up the first down. So again, on this drive, just coming close to getting that stop on third down, but we're just not quite there. It's this one. Is picked off it looked like Manny Stokes hit it and then Logan Smith the freshman strong safety came down with it they're not going to look at it either so a little tip drill evens us up in the turnover differential and it's going to give our offense a chance to open up the lead a little bit more here just a real defensively strong game honestly from both sides of the ball is Right on, make sure we slide down here, pick up the positive yards without getting hit. And we're going to take a risky play call here, but we're going jet sweep on third down. Seeing if the blocking can be there. Well, it's enough for Malcolm to be able to cut it up inside. And he got enough to move the chains for us. Sometimes those plays work phenomenally for us. Other times, maybe not so much. And sometimes we just have to hope for the best. Thrown across the field. Oh, maybe had Malcolm, but 
Radon can't find him, so just an incompletion. And we will go inverted veer on this one. Again, Radon gonna keep it. Doesn't quite have the blocking. Oh, he was so close. Two steps faster. I think he shoots through the gap and takes it to the house. The blocking not quite there in time. Well, now we have the uh, third and seven. And we'll see how the coverage is going to be. I'm giving it to Marquise again. Call me a fool, but if he comes down with it just often enough, it's worth it to throw those balls up every once in a while. Not sure how they don't call that a touchdown, but it's 49 more yards for the beast of a receiver. And yeah, they placed that ball at the inch line as we're going to try a little goal line on goal line again as J.J. Barr on the fullback dive does get in this time for his touchdown. And it'll be 21-3 to now. Curious to see. Can the defense keep this up the whole game? You know, the only points that they've given up came off of that first play fumble where Syracuse got the ball inside field goal range to begin. So I got to admit, I'm feeling very, very confident about... Uh, them continuing to get stops. This is a run and a fumble forced by the strong safety who already has an interception and Kale Mackey picks it up. So now they have a first play of the drive fumble and we are winning the turnover battle. That looks pretty clean to me. Just a big hit from the true freshman, I think. What a phenomenal pickup that recruit ends up being. And now it looks like this could be enough to really turn the game... Uh, just in our favor for good. They're starting to run out of time. So if we could, uh, I don't know, just come out and continue to hold them off, I'd feel real confident. Two minutes left in the third quarter. Looking to score again. It's third and one. We'll go with the counter. Give it to Braden Bennett. And Braden has a lot of space. Can't make that man miss, but he does have a first and goal for us. We'll come out in the eye form on first and goal for a run up the middle. And CJ Beasley got met at the line of scrimmage. Honestly, pretty quick. Good stop from Syracuse. I don't know why, but I'm just feeling really stubborn about the run. So we're going to continue to do it. Try in the counter there. And, well, Beasley gets inside the five. So that's a good pickup. But it is third goal now. And we could be making a mistake. But I'm going to go to the air to pass this DJ Johnson. Wow. Wow. Crazy diving deflection there from the man who already has a crazy interception. And I will indeed settle for the field goal. We'll make it a 21-point game with under seven minutes to go. So if the defense can play even half as well as they have, I think this game's almost in the bag. There is always the possibility of us screwing this up, though. We've seen it happen plenty of times. Just got to try to avoid the choke. And I'm curious to see if they continue to just run the ball or not. They should. They shouldn't quite go away from their entire offense just yet. But I'm sure they're worried about it as... Oh my gosh. Bait him into throwing it to the running back and then hit him for a loss of two there. This quarterback still 50% on the day and just 100 yards passing is... I don't know how we didn't get that tackle. And this one's almost going to go the distance. That was a very, very clutch tackle. Rodgers just ran right past Will Phillips there, it seemed like. They're going to put it back on the ground, and Riley gets the stop this time. I really want to keep these guys out of field goal range. This will be the final play of the third quarter. They do get the snap off, and a deflection at the line of scrimmage from Kale Mackey to force the incompletion again. He's having himself one heck of a game as we head into the fourth. Up 21, looking to just seal the deal and really show why we belong in this top 10. Well, the question here is going to be, can we get the stop? Can we force the fourth down? They'll step back to pass. Oh, no. Kale got burned by Trevor Pena. Uh, interesting name. I feel like I'm not saying that correctly at all, but I have no idea. Um, but, yeah, just toasted Kale on that one, and... They get a first down now inside field goal range. So maybe we can create a turnover. I left the running back wide open. Will Phillips has him no problem. Swallows him alive and only gives up two yards. Going to go with uh, a little line blacker, linebacker blitz on this one. Wow. How is the quarterback still on his feet? Can we strip the ball? No. I thought for a second it came out. He got two yards out of that play. That's crazy. Well, let's see. Can we get the stop on third and six? They go to the air again. 
Man, not open. Manny Stokes gets the interception, and he's gone. Well, maybe. He doesn't quite seem to have the speed yet. The quarterback took a bad angle. The lineman is trying to get there. The quarterback actually took out the guy who would have for sure stopped that. And Manny gets, what, his second pick of the game and a defensive touchdown. Oh, wow. This is not the defense that we had last year. That's for sure. Four turnovers created? That's impressive. So, again, we managed to uh, hold them from scoring. It seems like the past couple times they've come close to some sort of scoring position. We force a turnover, and they're going to go through the uh, the highlights of our interceptions there. I love it. Manny plays in a way where if they throw it early, he'll be beat. But if he has time to get back to the ball, you know, he's going to get there in time. So if you're going to try to target him, you got to go for the quick throw or, you know, the, the sharp turn in the route, maybe a curl or a corner. That's how you're going to get there. And there's a sack on Andrew Estes. It's third and 17. Might be time for Syracuse to wave the white flag here. Just have to defend this first down marker a long ways down the field. And there they go at Cameron Brown, I think might be his name. They got enough for the first down. Good uh, route running there. That is great awareness by the wide receiver to know where he needed to get to. As this one, they're going to go at him again, and he does get the tackle, but gives up seven. And I want to press up here. Bring in the safety blitz. Quarterback, too much time in the pocket. Beats Brown again, so they get the first down. I'm just going to continue to bring pressure and see if we can get to him. Force him to either make a mistake or uh, take the sack. And yeah, there's the sack, so... Something to slow them down, and we get it there. Sean Brown getting the tackle. He says, I am tired of you picking on me and just continuously throwing at me, so I'm going to sack you. And they go uh, play action, and Brown gets the strip sack that time. We're not lucky enough to recover it, but forces the third and long. I think it's safe to say at this point that this quarterback is not having a, a good game. Third and 22, he's going to look to pass. He's going to get it up, and... Sandcastle's able to get the deflection. That's really all that we needed. Force this long at fourth down. And Syracuse is going to have to punt the ball away. 316. We'll probably try to start burning the clock, but uh, we won't be able to do that if Marquise takes this to the house. Doesn't quite have the speed. Uh, definitely an improvement in the special teams that we're up against today as opposed to against Virginia. But this is a nice dominating win. I don't want to force the defense to come back out because I'm worried that they might give up some points as uh, it's time to start burning the clock. Hopefully these guys don't feel the need to take their timeouts. They're down pretty much an insurmountable amount at this point. And with us getting the first down, just about there. Apparently this is run out of the Wildcat. Maybe I have a formational uh, sub incorrect because... Braden Bennett comes in at a couple th weird times under center, but good handoff from him, I guess. Definitely something I need to take a look at as let's make sure we burn as many seconds off as we can on this second down. Fewer plays that we have to run at this point, the better. And Beasley getting the first down. Well, that all but secures it. Unless they're taking timeouts, we are going to walk out of here with a win. And by the time we get the opportunity to play a, uh, a home game I'm not so sure that uh, you know we're going to know what to do three up three down on this five game road trip to start the season feeling pretty confident when we can slide down with Radon additional little seven yards to stat pad as the clock will finally there it is strike the triple zeros and what a dominating win over another conference opponent. So we start the season 3-0 in conference, all on the road. Can't emphasize that enough. And we take that impressive win, 31-3. to Only reason we gave up points was because we fumbled it on the first play from scrimmage. Uh, but Manny Stokes definitely deserves the player of the game. Three tackles, but two picks, including a pick six. Had a deflection that led to another interception. Uh, another defensive standout today. Uh, Kale Mackey had an absolute, you know, stellar drive and had some really big plays down the stretch. Uh, all in all, just
Just a complete game. Still not super happy with our offensive line's uh, ability to run block right now, but I love to see the way that this has started. Uh, number 17, Ole Miss, is upset. That's good news for us, I guess. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll see a bunch more of those as we outrush them by a ton. They did outpass us in the end, but, I mean, we held them to less than 200 yards. We won the turnover differential battle by two. When was the last time that happened? Oh, my one dream is to just be even on the season at the end of the year. Obviously, I think we're still in a bit of a hole, but if the defense can just continue to progress the way that they have so far this year, I have decently high hopes. I mean, we actually held on to three interceptions. That's an incredible rarity for us. Right on Randell is our offensive player of the game. A couple of touchdowns, some yards here and there. Honestly, not the best game, but the offense was so-so eh, all day long. And Manny Stokes is obviously our defensive and overall player of the game. So at 3-0, let's go ahead and uh, sim through to the next week. We go on the road out of conference to play at Troy. So we'll get to see a, you know, recently updated Sunbelt team, which will be awesome. Bunch of recruits ready to visit, which is great news. Our first home game, I think that we might really stack them up. Uh, I love to see it, though. All high overalls, which is great. Get our XP, and what are we ranked? We stay at 8, so the top 10 must not have seen a crazy amount. Uh, but in general, I gotta say, we're actually being rewarded this season by the pollsters. We've done what we need to do. We came out our first game against the top 10 Notre Dame and got the win. And then in our next two games against, you know, inferior opponents, we have blown them out. So we're doing what we need to do to get those votes that we'll need. Uh, and we just got to hope that some teams in front of us lose and that we continue to win so we can just keep climbing up this ladder. Now, we don't think we saw any losses really in the, uh, the top 10. Michigan dropped down. Uh, Florida jumped up. They beat Alabama. Um... Michigan State lost to USF somehow, and Ole Miss lost to Mizzou. Any teams dropping out? Ohio State and Florida State. Uh, I guess I'm fine with that. Florida State, that must mean that Notre Dame won? What are they? They're back up to 13th, so great for our strength of schedule for the Fighting Irish to continue to win their games now. And uh, Let's take a look. Is our boy still in the Heisman watch? I think after that performance, he probably dropped down. He went up. He's in second in the country right now. He had a very mediocre game. Three catches. Sure, he had a great touchdown, but uh, interesting. If he wins it, I'm going to be so, so surprised. Uh, you got a wide receiver and a quarterback from Georgia, so they might be stealing some votes from each other. Uh, I mean, this wide receiver had a much better game. Five catches, similar amount of yards, but three touchdowns. So, uh, interesting. Interesting. Well, you love to see it. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. We can highlight the next one. We're only minus one in the turnover differential this season. So great potential against a pretty bad B minus Troy team. Again, we should blow these guys out. But, uh, you know, a chance for us to go positive there for maybe the first time ever. But again, that's going to have to wait for the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to like the video. Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to get notified. Those two things are super, super helpful in getting this channel seen by other people. So I really appreciate the support you guys have shown and continue to show for this series. While you're down there doing that, I do want to see some predictions for what the heck's going to happen with Marquise and the Heisman race. Does he win it? Is he top five? Is he completely irrelevant by the end of the season? And of course, while you're doing that, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and as always, the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. I think they're about to come out with the first release of the Pac-12 teams should be at least within a couple of weeks uh so i'm really excited for that especially as a as a fan of a pac 12 team it'll be fun to see them uh, start to work their way through that but as far as this episode is concerned that's gonna have to do it so thanks again for watching my name is Goonmaster. you guys are the teal boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later adios